I remember doing artwork as one of my first memories. I grew up with a single parent, my mom and my sister, and it was sort of an escape. My work is pretty gestural. I love clay and I love to paint and I love to paint on clay and I love collage, which was my first medium really when I was a child, cutting and pasting and sewing. So um, I start out with gestures and so the gestures sort of lead into what the work is going to say. I try not to think too much about the end result. With my pieces, I just, I'm always seeking freedom. I'm always seeking to let go of all the chatter in my, my brain and my thoughts and let my work take on a life of its own. I feel very fortunate to have landed in Wilmington in 1988. It was a, a very exciting time meeting a lot of um, young artists that were moving here. We were all in our 30s and we started a life drawing group and we'd get together and critique work and um, it was just really, really great. And then we started um, No Boundaries, Pam Toll, after going to Macedonia and Dick Roberts and I. And it just grew into um, more of a making our community more international and er introducing our artist friends to artists that we would bring here for No Boundaries. Participating in art colonies just opens you up to um, experiences in other parts of the world. It's almost like time traveling some places, especially in Macedonia. I felt like that the first time I went there in 1995. It was going back in time 40 years and it was just magical to have that experience. The travel and the people and languages and you learn from the other artists and I learned a lot about letting go and just let happen what happens and if you don't like it paint on top of it and if you don't like that paint on top of it again so it was um very freeing for me so when i start on a piece i try to um, keep it loose and playful. So a lot of times I'll start out um, with just a jester sketch in, on either the paper or a clay piece. It doesn't matter, I just might start, I see something there and do a movement across it. And then when things start showing up, I'll take notes. I usually have a sketchbook beside me. I might sketch a little bit of what I'm doing. A title might pop into my head. And um, so that's how the ideas develop. I have files that I keep of different objects and animals and things. And a lot of the objects and things that um, I had found ended up in these dress form pieces which have led to working with the tarps behind them, which has led to my inspiration now to do installation with them. There's a lot of uh, movement and change in the dress form, so I'm adding things onto them and tying them on, but I like the fact that it's not permanent, that I can like lay objects down on the ground and um, make a different statement with each one. When I'm working in clay, I usually like the wet clay work the best at first. Um, and 
sometimes not initially right off. It's almost a little bit of a struggle to figure out what direction the piece is going to go in. So it's almost during the middle part of creation with like, I'm talking about clay really, but it pertains to painting too, is when I start to really get excited and see what the piece is trying to tell me because I, um, I listen to what it tries to say and it's not that I'm looking for anything specific usually, but things will start jumping out at me. When I drag my favorite tools across the clay, the, um, the grog in it will form lines. And a lot of times I'll let those lines lead me into relief where I want to add clay or take away clay. So, I have a whole palette of terra sigillata and over hundreds of tests that I've done with the different oxide patinas. And I um, fell in love with the terra sig because it um, is not glossy, it's got a satiny finish, and it shows off texture. So, when I'm working, I pretty much let the piece tell me what it wants to do. Like I knew I was gonna do a vessel, a narrative vessel, but I didn't know if you know, jesters were gonna come out of it or um, people or columns or animals. Animals appear a lot. So this one just ended up being, at this point, pretty abstract. Just preform shapes. Some of them are almost cloud-like, and other ones make me think of um, pillars and columns. So, this clearly just looks like the moon, so it has to be white. Even though there's blue moons and red moons, and I can change the color a little bit I want again with the patinas. So the vessel's been fired. So I've done a lot of testing with the um, patinas on the terra sig to get different colors. And you can get a whole different palette even just using one background. So I have a lot of decisions to make again at this point of like what kind of patina I'm gonna put on the black, the green, the red, and the white. That's the beauty of clay is at different stages, you can do different things. It's really fun when I go back and I finish a to piece to look at, it's almost like chapter one to where I came at to the end of the book and the puzzle pieces sort of all come together. At the same time I was working on the piece, a lot of times I'll have extra clay around and I was making little shapes and forms, not knowing where they were gonna go. And they ended up being part of the space debris. And I thought, oh, well, I would like to have them sort of flying out of the vessel. And that's what happened with that piece. It's, it's fun, it's playful, you know, it's a little dark because it's, it's space and we don't know what's out there. But, um, so it turned into space debris in the moonlight. My favorite projects, I guess, are the ones that, um, they're quiet. There hasn't been publicity about them because they're, you know, donor memorial tiles and it's a private thing when you lose somebody or a loved one. I've done some commissions here, installations for the Lower Cape Fear Hospice Care Center, and they wanted a mural in a Flemish bond brick pattern that when you drove up to the building, you would just see bright, bold, colorful designs. And then when you got up close, you would see the names and realize they were donor memorial tiles. And so the Hospice Care Center Celebration of Life, one, two, and three is over 2,000 tiles. 
also for hospice, the Whiteville Hospice, the Angel House. They wanted something more recognizable. So there's six murals in Whiteville, corn, cotton, hydrangeas and magnolias and strawberries and blueberries. And those are done with mason stains and on a glazed tile that I got from Spain. I just was very honored to work for hospice and especially humbled when people would come by when I was installing the tiles and they might see their loved one's name or they might come back and visit and see tiles from a previous installation that I had done and, and sometimes be moved to tears. So sometimes even when I would be working on the tiles, I might um, look up the person's obituary if I was struggling with the name or the design just to read about the person. So it made it more personal to me. Another commission I did was for the North Carolina Bar Foundation at a new building in Raleigh. And um, the project, they wanted me to depict all races and nationality and ages in three, a three paneled mural in relief. So the um, We Are the People of North Carolina is made up of three separate murals. They're each about five feet by six feet, working with clay for these um, large pieces. That was a challenge to figure out how I was gonna join them together by not making um, separate square tiles. So I, was using 25 pound blocks of clay, pounding it out, and I figured out a technique to join the edges together that worked pretty well, beveling and scratching and scoring and pounding. So there was just a lot of little things that I learned and big things that I learned on that project. I usually have many pieces going. Um, I might be working in clay on one table, working on assemblage on another, painting on um, canvas tarps on the walls in another section. And so I'll sort of jump off the piece I just finished and that will lead me into other areas. With my pieces, I just, I'm always seeking freedom. I'm always seeking to let my work take on a life of its own but it still can be your story. It might be just a thought or a spark from a childhood memory. And then if that's a message that comes through, I don't expect the viewer to see that. Sometimes to me, it's more interesting when the viewer can find their own story in looking at a piece of work.